Test, test. What's up? All right, everyone. So you can see there's a name that was here that's missing. So I'm replacing him, or we're replacing him. There's no moderator. Name is Mario Nofel. I'm the co-founder of NFT Tech. So we're a holding company that's uh, going public in a few days or weeks. And, um, you know, we're deploying capital in the NFT space, in the metaverse space. So, you know, it's my responsibility to know where the space is going. Kate? Hi, I'm Kate Borcherelle. I work explaining blockchain and cryptocurrency in all sorts of ways, from writing books to teaching students to working with professional bodies and companies and doing various media gigs. And I also write, um, I also write science fiction. So I'm always thinking ahead about how technology is going to change our world and how we are going to be living uh, in a very, very near future. Claudio? I'm Claudio, I'm come from DLT Code, company specializing in cybersecurity. You're getting the, the mic closer, it's yeah. not that good, okay. yeah. So, uh, specialized in cybersecurity, we, we do mostly audit, we, we double around with, with all the fields that our developers in all the companies do, and uh, have very much fun with that. And on top of that, we build different spaces for training and similar online. We have our own little metaverse where you can practice a lot of different skills from data science to any other type of digital digital spaces. Cool. All right, so I'm going to kick it off with a pretty basic question that me and Kate agreed we can start with. And I think that, so we're going to take this, you know, as a casual discussion. I hope it brings you all value. But, you know, we're all talking about the metaverse. And, you know, Facebook made the announcement of meta as well. And it's becoming a, a pretty sexy buzzword. And we're going to see companies adding metaverse in their name to get that additional bump in valuation. So, I'll define it after you guys. How would you define the metaverse? Oh, my word. Um, the metaverse is something we're living through at the moment. So the metaverse is that intersection of the realities and the data and the physical uh, that we've really all experienced in the last 18 months as we've been having to do our normal lives online. Um, and we have all just plunged into the metaverse in a big way. Uh, in the last, as I say, the last two years with that convergence of technologies. Claudia, how would you define it? Uh, metaverse is not a technology. It's, uh, it's a moment in time. It's uh, this singularity where we combine all our technology and everything that we developed for the last 20 years, uh, which we evolved, which we started living and we are living it day to day. And it's not about, it's not about the technology itself. It's a little bit like the cloud computing. It's not about a, a computer in someone else's house. It's a combination of everything that we developed and everything we did so, so far, combined with the need to break the reality that we have and to gain more time in different spaces. Wow, okay, I'm, I'm a lot more simple when I define it. Like, the way I define it, especially for someone not in crypto, and, and let me know what you think. I say it's, it's a digital representation of the world we live in today without predetermined physics. So there's no written rules because the code allows you, you know, the code determines what rules you have to operate in in the metaverse. And the way to imagine it without referring to the movie, you know, I don't want to be cheesy, the Ready Player One movie, um, is like look at the, how we function in our physical world today and, you know, with the technology that we have, with the digital ownership with NFTs, you know, I say NFTs are like the atomic unit of the metaverse because that allows you to have ownership, that allows a representation of our lives within the metaverse. How, how, what do you think of that definition? No, that's, a, that's an absolutely crucial definition because the, we've had the tools for a kind of metaverse existence for a really long time. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing quite a few people here have been involved, you know, had uh, lives in Second Life for instance. And that really was, as you say, it was a, a world without quite the same rules. Um, and it, it had an extraordinary range of possibilities. But the one thing actually that it was missing was that ownership piece. The thing that NFTs um, actually give us the, the, the title deed to our digital assets. And I think that that is the missing piece that brings the excitement of Second Life from 15, almost 20 years ago now and brings it into the possibilities that we now have. That's insane, 20 years. Um, but when you look at, and I'll go to Claudio in a sec, but when you look at the metaverse and you look at a centralized metaverse, like Facebook's, you know, it's expected to be centralized, or Second Life, 
a lot of people prefer not to call it a metaverse. Um, I don't know why. I think it should still be called a metaverse because it fits everything else. All the, you know, there's just essential party there. I try to call it, you know, I call them all a metaverse and it's all within an ecosystem. And I'll say a new buzzword that I hope will take, you know, will start getting attention, a multiverse. So all these metaverses existing and being interoperable. Claudio, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to be very hard to make metaverses interoperable. Uh, federate them in a very nice way, we're still going to need a protocol. What is metaverse? What is the definition of the word metaverse? Did we write a guide on what, how it should be done, what, how it should be compliant with the metaverses between them? Did we align the requirements in terms of data, of, uh, of uh, what set of data should be unique for all the metaverses, which not, how we're going to manage all that? So it's going to be very hard to federate and combine all these metaverses at the first try because each one they want, uh, want their own technology and they're going to they want to be king and they want to be the one that's going to be adopted. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, uh, to an extent, I think, and you're the tech guy, so you know a lot more than I, but I think trying to expect metaverses to be interoperable today is just silly because they need to be independent to be able to build the ecosystem. It's too early to be interoperable when they can't even... You know, it's too early to even build a decentralized metaverse today that functions to its full potential. Looking at interoperability so early, I think is, um, you know, I, I've always used that quote. The human brain overestimates the short-term impact of innovation, but underestimates the long-term potential. I think what we're seeing now is overestimating where the metaverse will be today. Um, and, um, and I think also underestimating where it will be in a few years' time. So I think, but interoperability, don't you think it's inevitable as the technology develops? Uh, Let's say it evolves over the next few decades? It's not a question if it's uh, inevitable because you can send emails between metaverses. So you can communicate your profiles between them and so on. There's gonna be data and there's gonna be spaces and, and, and places that you're gonna be able, like a Word document, you can edit it in Google Docs and you can edit it in Office and you can open it in an open office and there's a little bit, and some technology that are, are, are crossover and they can pass from, from one to another, from one technology and from one company to another, but not everything. There, there's a thing that's called vendor lock. Everybody's going to try to be king and be this, do this adoption because if you do this adoption, then I have more power over all this ecosystem. So there's going to be a very big fight there. there there's, there's, well, possibly going to see a war on metaverses, which is going to be pretty cool. <laughs> And how would, let's define interoperability, Kate. Like, how do you, when you say metaverses are going to be interoperable, for, for someone that's trying to imagine what the metaverse will be, and I've spoken to people that just, they just don't understand the concept of a digital world. I, Talking I, about I, an interoperable one. <laughs> I honestly think that's because we're, we're all uh, currently working with systems that don't talk to each other. So the concept of, you know, maybe being able to open a Microsoft document on a Mac. Uh, that kind of thing. We, we don't yet have interoperability in our normal lives. Um, I, I, the, the whole thing about um, seeing things in the future and understanding how the metaverse will develop or how our world will develop um, is really interesting. But that, it's that very short term, you're right, that we're not quite there. But I don't think that, I don't think that it's going to be long. I think that that um, ability to just start to, to interact between systems that ability to harness the narrow focus of each individual system and bring them together to make something that is greater than the sum of its parts. I believe that is within the next five to 10 years. So it's reasonably short term and we won't notice it's happened. It will just come upon us like the last 10 years has. Yeah, so... The example I give when talking about interoperability is, you know, I'm, I'm in Malta. We're all in Malta today. I was in Poland yesterday. I'll be in London tomorrow. And I'll move from country to country with, you know, my suitcase, my phone, my AirPods. They're the things that I own, the, the, the knowledge that I have. And I'll just be moving from one country to a country operating in those countries that will have a different culture, different people, different language, different everything. But I can operate in those worlds. 
Now, that's not as a pretty basic example. Then you can move to whether you know, Microsoft Word, et cetera, are interoperable. And I think they are to an extent. You can link, you know, Zapier and stuff allows you to link all these different softwares. But it's still, even that's very early. Web 2.0 interoperability is still early. Imagine Web 3 interoperability. But back to my example is that you move from that country to country. I see the metaverse or the, the multiverse as multiple metaverses. And each metaverse is like a country. Facebook starting their own metaverse, so what? I know many people probably hate what I'm saying now, but let them have a metaverse. Let them have a centralized metaverse. It's our choice. It's our choice on whether to use it or not. So there'll be a decentralized multiverse with multiple metaverses, and each one will have its own culture, its own community. And you, it be, being interoperable allows you to move from one to another and, and experience all those different uh, metaverses. I, th I think that aspect of choice is really important. The idea that it's not a single place um, and that uh, because we're relying very much on digital uh, in terms of interacting ourselves, our physical selves with the metaverse, we can choose to interact with something that is not physically, that is physically remote from us. Um, and that choice is really essential. Yeah, but there's one thing here. You are comparing metaverses with countries. They are not so similar with countries. They're more similar with games. So when we're talking about two different metaverses, it's not Spain and US or UK and France. It's more like Minecraft and Quake. So they're, they're two different. They're the same thing. They have different engine underneath, but the dynamics are different very much. It's not just the culture context that's, that's changed. And we rely, it, metaverse is not something that we discovered. It's something that we create. And the ones that are going to create it are the ones that are going to decide how to interoperate these things and if they're actually going to be interoperable. So it's finally centralized thing, maybe, but not bad, I don't know. But regulated one from an association, from uh, power of the market, that would be very interesting because you say, okay, let Facebook has its own metaverse and so on. Yeah, but they have a very high market. I mean, us technologists, we will choose a better metaverse in terms of privacy, in terms of security, in terms of intimacy. But the general public is going to choose what they already know. Yeah, so I see, so first about the countries, I agree. Like, you know, metaverse is, is, is an oversimplification when you talk about countries, because countries, you know, it's just different cultures, different locations. But I was just trying to refer to the interoperability between countries. But you referred to link um, the metaverse to gaming, which I think is really exciting. Uh, because that's another point I want to talk about. But before moving to gaming, we have six minutes left. Um, you talked about central, and, and if I heard you correctly, central metaverses, let's say Facebook's meta, will have a lot of money to spend. And they'll be able to attract the retail market because they've got the money to spend, makes it really easy. And again, I, okay, I'll speak my mind. I just don't think that's too bad of a thing in the short term because personally, I think it's inevitable that the decentralized metaverses will eventually win. And I think decentralization is a process. You can't expect decentralization. You know, Tezos was talking about this a few years ago. They were being criticized for being too centralized. But they said, you know, we can't be de decentralized from day one. Uh, well, when we, uh, we actually started talking about the metaverse, when the globe started actually talking about metaverse, when Mr. Zuckerberg came out, handed us the blue pill, and everybody was hard on metaverse. That's what happened in the last weeks. You go to online and, and, and general public goes to look for information about metaverse, and you can find many things. I don't even, I'm not really sure there's a Wikipedia page on metaverse, where you can have Wikipedia things or for anything. You don't really actually have a clear definition or, or scope. And the thing or, or the, the driver of all, the, of all these new uh, ecosystems, it's actually all these big fishes that's going to create and push this much, ver push ver very forward technology and create the hype necessary to bring the money of the investors for the smaller fishes to make them grow and try to overthrow the big fish and create something a lot more awesome, in all, a lot more in terms of the, what we are tr actually trying to achieve in terms of democracy and, and a more global and clear world. And 
that with crypto and, and, and the independent metaverses is where it's going to go. And finally, yes, they're going to win because that's what all of us crave. It, it's, a, it's a good point that actually the larger companies are like Facebook coming in and saying, you know, we are, we are going to start the metaverse. That is, that's not simply bringing the concept and the funding in. It's also bringing the familiarity to a very, very large population. So now we have two billion people who are going, oh, the metaverse. Whereas they may not decide that they're going to buy some mana and play on Decentraland. They may not decide that they're going to get involved with what we consider to be part of the metaverse. So getting that familiarity through the very, very large centralized populations opens the doors to that ultimate decentralized metaverse in 10 years time. Yes, yes. And, and I agree with both of you. I think um, Facebook brings the attention, they bring the money, they bring the adoption. But eventually people will be like, cool, now I understand what the metaverse is. But now they start to understand when you tell them Facebook owns your assets. Because right now, if you say to someone that doesn't know what the, how the metaverse works, they're like, it's a digital asset. So what if they own it? But as they start using the metaverse and you tell them, hey, do you like the house that you have? Do you like the, the, the life that you've built in the metaverse? Well, Facebook owns it. And then eventually Facebook will monetize it. And then the decentralized metaverses will start to make more sense to people that are not in this room, to the retail market. Yes, and I believe it's that interoperability that we're seeking that's going to make the difference. Because if you have an asset in Facebook and you say, well, I want to move that game piece or that house to <laughs> Twitter, they will realize that actually that title deed is the key to that interoperable and distributed metaverse. The word we're missing here when we're talking about Facebook and ownership it's sovereignty. With everything that we built with blockchain, we try to, to give the sovereignty back to people. So if that's our trend, that's where we're bringing the world. And finally, in the metaverse, you're going to have workers from all over the world. And in Facebook, you're going to work for free just to get likes. And in another metaverse, you will actually own assets. And that's going to be your life. Well, either Facebook changes their model or they're not going to be able to keep up with all these other places that not just bring value and gives you back your sovereignty and, and let you be owner of your life and everything, including image, but also it makes you win your day-to-day -day bread and money. That's the big difference with, with the new or, or this adoption of metaverses. It's a place where you can work, live, study, and thankfully, Go, up, go out and have a little walk as well, depending on how it's, it's, the technology is done. Yeah, so they told me to conclude in the last five minutes, but it was a minute and a half, so I forgot to conclude. Um, but to, to just kind of conclude what we talked about, I think we all agree on most points. I want to just say one thing about Facebook. I don't know whether... So I was listening to an interview with the, I think the founder of Second Life, one of the top um, uh, gaming studios, and he said that, you know, he, that was a year ago, before Facebook's announcement and before the hype that we're seeing today. And he said that he, he knows the metaverse or multiverse is going to be decentralized. And that's how it should be. And they're only going to play a small part of that. And they have to be interoperable with a decentralized multiverse or multiverse, uh, metaverse. But to conclude, I think um, what we've touched on is how we would define the metaverse. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to kind of sneak in the term multiverse because I think it's pretty cool. See what happens. Um, we, we gave our thoughts on, on Facebook's announcements on interoperability, where we think the space is going to head over the next few months and years. Um, but I think that brings you all hope that brings you value. In the last 30 seconds, um, I'll let the speakers tell you more about, um, you know, where you can reach out to them. I think that's what they do. And that's what moderators do, don't they? So, Kate, where can we, if anyone wants to speak to you, where can they reach out to you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on LinkedIn, you can find me on the app, and I look forward to talking to you. Claudio? Uh, you can find me at DLT Code. Uh, just Google it, you're going to find a lot of information about us, uh, on LinkedIn as well. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any question that you have. I tend to answer all emails. Cool. All right, everyone, so I hope that brings you value. Last three seconds, four, it's going up now. Oh, that's overtime. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone.